Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards, changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet, even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. He said, 
sends us rain on this year we received plenty. He gives us sunshine, and he makes this earth produce fruits, all kinds of vegetables, grains, all the things that sustain us, that have healing qualities, that make sure that we stay alive. It all comes from God. God loves us, fragile and weak and small human beings. He takes care of us. Now, in our second reading today, taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians, we hear that God's care and love for us goes even farther. Not only does He give us this earth with all its plenty, not only does He nourish us with the fruits of this earth, he nourishes us with his own company. St. Paul takes us to the heart of the Holy Trinity and tells us that the second person of the Holy Trinity, the Son, even though he was in the form of God, he did not deem equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, assuming a human form. What is happening? God in the person of his son assumes our fragility. He takes on our human flesh so as to walk with us among these elements of the world that threaten us, so as to feel our weakness, so as to be able to come to our aid in our moments of death. God has become one of us. In the Gospel of John, in the prologue that we are all familiar with, it says that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. But literally, the phrase says, and the Word became flesh and pitched His tent among us. And dwelt in His tent among us. God shares our fragile conditions of our existence here on earth. He is our companion. That's how far He goes to sustain us, to be with us. St. Paul will tell us that he even went into death and the death on the cross, so that even in our dying, we wouldn't be alone, but we could go through the holy night to the hand of Jesus, who went through the gates of death into the life of the resurrection. So even in that moment, we will be dying in our death. God is taking care of us and we human beings. Today's patron saint, Saint Therese of Lisieux, is a doctor of the church, Carmelite nun, and a spiritual teacher. She teaches us how to live out our spirituality. And her own spirituality is known as the little way. The way for the little people, we can say. For people who are weak, who are fragile, who find it too difficult to follow some of these extreme examples of some great saints. So, Saint Therese of Lisieux always wanted to be a saint. There was no doubt in her mind that that was something she, she was destined to Holy, sanctity. And yet, she discovered very soon that all her efforts were quite limited. She cannot be like those great saints. It's too much for her. So what can she do? And she had this great idea. If I'm small and weak, if I fall asleep during prayers, if I cannot grasp those complicated books about spiritual life, what will I do? Well, I'll have to rely completely on God to make me a saint. If I cannot climb that summit of holiness, well, Jesus will have to carry me all the way to heaven. He will have to do it for me. I cannot do those great things, but I'll do small things with, with great love. I'll be that little child that relies completely on God the Father. My weakness, my poverty, my fragility will be my path to holiness. Because I'll remain small, and I'll force God to take care of me at every step of my life. 
that experimental one. Interestingly, in today's gospel, when the Father